Phil Dracovic told Boston.com that Brian Kelly lied to him and his parents while he was at Notre Dame. Now, this was about the status of Ian Book and their offensive coordinator, Chip Long. Dracovic also said the coaches at Notre Dame treated people very poorly and, quote, the football team and culture is not what people think it to be. A lot to unpack there. Blake, I'll start with you. Is it fair for Dracovic to call Brian Kelly a liar here? I mean, I think it, it, this is par for the course in, in, in college football. I think lying, who knows whether it's true. that This is one side of the story. Uh, I mean, it, this could go either way, but it doesn't really matter because he's not there anymore. He, he sounds like he didn't have a great experience at Notre Dame. Uh, and, and this happens in college football. You cannot accept, expect to be named the starting quarterback and, and, and you have to compete. These, these are players that play at the highest level uh, of college football. Brian Kelly is paid to win football games and, and put the best people on the field that he thinks gives him an opportunity to win. So, uh, you know, maybe he didn't think that uh, Jakovic was, was his guy. Who knows? Uh, it, it doesn't always go the way that you think college football is going to go. Trust me, I've got three kids that play college football. Things haven't always gone the, exactly the way that I planned it to, but uh, it's, it's, you just got to keep fighting and, and move on. If it doesn't work out for you, you've got the transfer portal now. He's transferred. He's turned out to be probably a better prospect than, than, than Ian Book or any of the Notre Dame quarterbacks are right now. So it's worked out for both parties. Uh, I think there's always bad blood, a little bit of bad, bad blood when, when guys leave uh, just because things don't work out. But uh, who knows the, the, the true story? Phil Jakovic is what he's going through now is par for the course of college football. There's always going to be guys that are very upset with their head coach in the end of the game. Sources out of Notre Dame have told me Chip Long was really, really tough on Jakovic during his tenure at Notre Dame. And what guys need to understand when they're going through the recruiting process, instead of just looking at the system that you're gonna be running, whether or not you like the campus, or whether even you like the coaches that are recruiting you and the way they're recruiting you, you better make sure that you can play for the type of guy that you're going to play for and see him in action as a coach. College coaches are very, very tough guys. In terms of whether Brian Kelly lied to him or not, that's all a matter of interpreting the conversation. Did he promise him that he was going to be the starting quarterback? Did he promise him he was going to get rid of Chip Long in order to make him happy? Most of the time, when you see a guy who's won a lot of games leave an organization or leave a college football team, you have a bunch of guys that say, man, I'm glad he's gone. He was a really hard guy to deal with. All winners are very, very tough people to deal with day in, day out, and their expectations are sky high. That's a great point, Carl, but the best coaches in college football, in my opinion, are guys that push you every day to be the best version of yourself that you can be every single day and to improve and, and that makes your team better with competition. So uh, there's very few coaches that are great coaches that are going to sit back and let you just do your own thing and, and, and let you get away with things that, that aren't the right way. And so Brian Kelly is one of those guys. He's got a great track record at all the places that he's been. He's a winner. He's a competitor. And sometimes that rubs people off the wrong way if it doesn't work out for them at, at the stop that they you know, had just gone to. And, that, and that, that's why there's a transfer portal now. Yeah, along those lines, Blake, how do you manage that as a head coach, knowing that if you are unhappy, if you do push the kid maybe too far, that they could just pack up and leave? I mean, we talk about having to recruit your own players and how difficult it is in the transfer, transfer portal era. How does a head coach manage that? You, you hope every, every student athlete that comes in just wants to be pushed, but that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, I think you've, you've got to know, know, know the kids. You've got to know who you're, who you're dealing with. Uh, as a quarterback, if I were a head coach, I would take at least two high school kids every single recruiting cycle because you know you're going to lose one or two guys in the portal every year if they're not starting. That's just the way college football is now. Kids don't want to sit and wait. They want to go play. 
So, and with the, with the new uh, rule of, of keeping 85 scholarships on your roster now, it becomes a lot easier to push your players even harder now because the guys that you lose, you can replace immediately. And in the old days, it wasn't that way. You had to be really careful about, uh, you know, pushing guys too far because if they left, uh, it, it could really limit your roster. So I think it's a, it's a new age for football. I, I think coach, coaches now are, are, are a little more careful generally at, at saying some of the things uh, that, that, that maybe old school coaches uh, used to say back in the day, but they're still doing it. I, I hear stories all the time of, of things that makes me kind of raise my eyebrows, but, you know, transfer portal works both ways for, for players and for coaches, and you can replenish your roster just as easy as you lose players now.